Well, hello, and welcome again to another OpenShift Commons briefing. Today, I'm with Jeff McCormick, um, one of my favorite people um, from Crunchy Data, who's going to talk to us about Postgres SQL operator um, that he's created. We're using it with OpenShift and what all that means. Um, it's a new concept to me, so um, I'm going to let him explain it and ex introduce himself. So without any further ado, Jeff, take it away. Thanks, Diane. Um, yeah, today we're going to talk, uh, I'm going to give an overview of a new capability that, we're, that we have named a basically Postgres operator. And I'll go into details about what it is and uh, how it's built and that kind of thing in this briefing. And then we'll wrap it up with a uh, short demonstration at the end just to show you how, how it behaves. Um, I work for uh, Crunchy Data. We're a Postgres company, and that's all we do, essentially. We specialize in open source Postgres, uh, sales, support, um, uh, also custom development needs for people doing, you know, unique things with Postgres database. We have um, a presence in the federal and government space with uh, certified version of, of open source Postgres as well. So I encourage you to look at our website, crunchydata.com, um, for more information about uh, the different kinds of services and things that we, we can offer, uh, including 24-7 support. Um, so first of all, what is an operator? That was my question about eight months ago. Um, at Cube, KubeCon, actually, is where uh, some guys at CoreOS mentioned this to me, and they said, you should really write an operator for Postgres, and I was like, I don't really know what an operator is in this context. So starting about four or five months ago, um, actually, we started this project uh, called the Postgres Operator to do just that. So what is an operator? Um, I guess, first of all, you can find all of this code that we're going to talk about today. It's open source. It's out there on the GitHub link, which I've listed there. Uh, so you can pull this down. You can build it, inspect the code, look at it. Um, there's built binaries on there for you to try out as well. And the containers for it that it uses are actually out on Docker Hub, too. So you can run examples and play around with it. Um, an operator really is just a controller piece of software. And in this context, we're going to write some software uh, that controls deployments of Postgres database components within a Kubernetes or OpenShift cluster. So that's really the focus of this operator and this controller. But really, if you're familiar with just controller patterns in general, that's what this is doing. Um, you deploy the operator on a Kubernetes or OpenShift cluster, it runs out there and it's waiting basically for a stimulus from uh, external events basically to cause it to do things. And the things that, that we are going to have it do are all Postgres database related uh, things. Um, you would use an operator to automate things as well. So there's, in the, in the world of databases, there's all kinds of workflows that DBAs would do or, or people that are deploying Postgres clusters on a uh, environment like Kubernetes or OpenShift. So what we can do is automate a lot of those manual tasks uh, and, and the operator uh, itself uh, is a place where we can add, build those kinds of automation layers. Um, the operator is built in Golang, uh, this particular operator is, and it uses the uh, Kubernetes client API for Golang. And there's a link there, and that's an interesting project. Uh, this project depends upon that project, open source project. And it just allows me from a Golang to interact with Kubernetes API using, you know, code that I would write very much. Uh, the operator basically is just interacting with uh, Kubernetes APIs to do all sorts of things like update labels of containers, create containers, delete containers. Um, so everything it does is based upon uh, 
leveraging that Kubernetes client API. Um, this operator, this Postgres operator is different than some other operators in that this one has a command line interface uh, that human beings can actually cause the operator to take action with. So from a command line perspective, um, the operator works a lot like uh, kubectl or the OC command in that it allows you from your desktop uh, an ability to interact with Kubernetes API, uh, OpenShift API. And whenever you do that, you can get information back uh, from the cl uh, Kubernetes cluster. Uh, you can also create um, objects on Kubernetes using that command line interface. And that's the primary means right now for the Postgres operator to uh, understand what you want it to do and for you to cause it to do things. The operator runs as just a standard deployment. Um, so you run it just like any other deployment out on your OpenShift or Kubernetes environment. Um, it sets out there and watches for third-party resources um, that we've defined, I think, five or six different Postgres-related third-party resources. And the operator is sitting there watching for changes on those. So when you create a third-party resource called, say, PG Cluster, that is a way that the operator will, will notice that event and it will take action. Um, and that's the primary, uh, I guess the interesting thing about an operator is that they're based largely on third-party resources. Um, yeah, in future versions of Kubernetes, they're changing from third-party resources to uh, another type that we'll talk about, custom resource definitions. So, but it, in the in, in reality, they're they're sort of serving the same purpose from a Postgres operator perspective. Is it just a means for us to catalog or store metadata about Postgres deployments? Uh, it's a place for us to store um, that metadata and interact with it through a standard Kubernetes API, as opposed to us inventing our own um, similar type construct. So I'm really excited about third-party resources and custom resource definitions. I think that was a really uh, a great feature that the Kube uh, team put together. Um, it makes things like the Postgres operator much more possible than before. Um, the operator uses a template-based approach for what actually makes up a Postgres cluster. So it may be a master database container, and it may be a series of replica containers. It may be uh, services for that those uh, containers. It may be a Postgres um, SQL-based router proxy. All of those things make up what we're calling a Postgres uh, cluster, and you can define those in a template. And the Postgres operator is designed so that you could add your own set of templates um, that meet your particular requirements. Uh, there's a default initial definition, um, and, but over time you'll see more uh, definitions placed out there. So this diagram shows you what kind of a, a schematic of what the operator consists of. On the outside of OpenShift, you have this PGO client, and that's just a command line binary, Golang binary like any other, and you run it, it connects through the Kubernetes API um, over to your OpenShift or Kubernetes cluster. So that's how it's interacting with the operator or your Kubernetes. It's exactly the same way, you know, like kubectl or OC command works. The operator is running inside OpenShift as that deployment, and it's interacting and has close relationship with these third-party resources that we've defined specifically for this Postgres um, environment. Um, so it's listening and watching for events on those and making changes uh, over time as those resources change. Um, the things that it does is primarily create those Postgres deployments and those deployment boxes, um, if you take a look inside one of those, it looks sort of like this and it can be quite complicated 
in Postgres, you can have a master database and then you can have a series of read-only replica databases connected to it and it's replicating um, state essentially. So you have a Postgres cluster and then you can put services out in front of those uh, databases. Um, those databases also have a related persistent volume claim. So there's lots of things going on here and um, one of the values of the operator is it treats all of those things as basically just a Postgres cluster. Um, so it's a simplification um, of, you know, Postgres clustering mechanics. Without the operator, you basically have to construct and deploy all of these things uh, in pieces or, or kind of more on a manual piece by piece basis. So why do you want to do this or what is this useful for, which was, um, you know, kind of the question I typically get asked is like, why do I, I need this operator? I can just run the containers and build templates and deploy those. And it's been working that way for a couple of years. We have a, a suite of containers that you, you know, there's lots of examples, you run some scripts, there's some JSON or YAML files and you can deploy those things. And, and if you're a developer or a good DevOps guy, you can string together a series of scripts that will help you automate the deployment of those things. Well, the operator, uh, I list some reasons here why you would find this useful. And it's really geared towards people that want to automate workflows around databases. Um, these are things like typically things a DBA would want to do, like backup databases or restore them. So if I build some of those workflows, implement those inside the operator, you can do things like reduce human errors. Uh, you don't necessarily have to build your own set of scripting around the base level containers to do certain things. And when you start working with large numbers of database deployments, that can get really unwieldy over time, uh, given all of the things that make up a, a, a functional, robust, like Postgres cluster. So without some sort of automation, you, you have lots of things you have to manually keep track of. Um, some people that are deploying lots of databases, they want an ability to implement a standard set of practices or policies around their databases. So the operator gives us a means to do those sorts of standard practices um, uh, for people that, that have very specific policy needs. And then the ease of use, I'll show you in the demonstration, but it's pretty simple. Uh, once you have the operator running and deployed, it's, it's really pretty simple to deploy a Postgres cluster using that um, versus some other means. Um, large scale deployments, uh, this is where the operator I think will really shine. If you have like say hundreds of Postgres databases you want to deploy and manage, um, that's where the operator I think really the value goes way up is uh, it gives you an ability to collect and maintain metadata on all of those clusters and you can then query based on that metadata. So it helps you manage and navigate across large numbers of, of these Postgres deployments on your OpenShift. Um, complex orchestrations is another one. It gives us a place, the operator to, gives us a place to develop, you know, like advanced or hard things to do in a database where it's like multi-step pieces that need to happen in order to do certain database related things. For example, like cloning a database, or cloning a Postgres database. There's a series of steps that a DBA would have to do uh, to manage that process. Well, we can implement those in the operator uh, so that it, it makes it much more um, user friendly to, and consistent to manage those complex orchestrations. Building blocks, so the operator, depends on a set of base uh, containers to behave and work uh, to deploy Postgres. And there's another project that we have called uh, Crunchy Container Suite, and it's open sourced as well. And there's four containers in there, in that suite of like 12 containers total, but we use four right now. And the operator basically is manipulating and instantiating these containers uh, in order to perform certain things. 
So it's using this as basically as a set of building blocks, but you can look at this base project of uh, the, and if you want to understand those building blocks and what they do, um, the operator basically just uses these or leverages them. So how do you, what are the features of the operator essentially? Here are things you can do with it from the command line. You can say PGO create my cluster and that's going to create a Postgres cluster deployment named my cluster. Uh, and it will, everything that makes up that cluster deployment, that's the services, that's the um, deployments, it's the PVCs, uh, or persistent volume claims, all of that uh, is kind of a collection of things will get created and instantiated just by issuing that command. And likewise, you can delete all of those related objects by just saying PGO delete. Um, for instance, there are secrets that are used to store the Postgres uh, credentials. Those would automatically get created and deleted by these PGO commands for you behind the scenes, and you wouldn't you wouldn't have to manually go in and delete those things. Um, PGO show is a command that just displays cluster information. I'll show you that in a minute. PGO test. Um, just runs a simple SQL query test against that Postgres cluster. It also prints out the equivalent psql commands that you could use, and that's useful for people that just want to manually uh, run the Postgres SQL client and know how to connect. It's a simple way to test your cluster connectivity and what's running. PGO show PVC will display the contents of a PVC. So Postgres stores its data on a uh, dedicated persistent volume claim. And this is just a real simplistic way to view the contents of that. I'm constantly uh, working with these containers. I was always wanting a way to do like an LS command on a persistent volume claim. And this is kind of a simplistic way to do that. PGO scale is a command that lets you scale up the number of read-only replicas in that Postgres deployment. Uh, initially, when you uh, define a, a Postgres cluster, you can specify zero or n numbers of read-only replicas, and the default is just zero, meaning that you don't have any read-only replicas. Well, if you ran PGO scale my cluster replica count one, it would basically just spin up a new read-only replica and eventually that replica will come up to the same level as the master database after you know a period of uh, however long it takes to replicate the master database um, right now those replicas are asynchronous and in a future release i'll support a synchronous uh, a, a, a synchronous replica as well pgo backup uh, and then a cluster name performs a full database backup um, that uses a PG base backup utility essentially, but it will create a full database backup um, of a cluster and store it out on a, a persistent volume claim that you can then reference to do a restore. And that restore command is there below PGO create. And if you pass it in the backup PVC name and the backup path, you can actually restore from one of those backups. PGO upgrade um, was is a, an ability to do a minor or major Postgres upgrade. And this is very useful for people that, let's say you've got an existing Postgres 9.6 uh, and you want to, you get a new point release of that. Uh, you basically can say PGO upgrade and it'll just automatically um, take down the old uh, image and bring up that cluster with a new image with the same data essentially. You can also do a major upgrade and that's quite, that was actually quite uh, interesting to develop. But what it will do is like convert from a 9.5 to a 9.6, that would be considered a major upgrade. So that involves running an upgrade container um, based off of the old version and then spinning up a new version uh, it's quite an involved process. Well, that PGO upgrade command automates that workflow. PGO create policy is a way to create a SQL based policy and just name it, give it a, give it a common name. 
So this is useful for people that have a series of SQL statements that they want to apply against a database. Those can be security related, they can be just application related, but basically they're uh, pieces of SQL that you're gonna name and then you can apply those policies towards a series of clusters based upon a uh, selector criteria. And that's really useful. For instance, if you had 100 Postgres databases in use and, they, and you wanted to apply a specific security policy, you could run PGO apply against that entire suite uh, or anything that matched the selector. Um, and that's a nice way to um, you know, maintain policies and it'll actually catalog which policies are applied towards um, a cluster as well. So at any time you can look at a cluster and say, well, has these policies applied to it? And that gives you an ability to, um, you know, know exactly where you're, where all your clusters at with regards to certain policies that you've set up. And then lastly, PGO clone cluster. That was complicated to write, and uh, it's an example of an advanced database-related workflow where it takes an existing database, creates a, a complete new copy of it using a replica, and it waits for the replication to complete, decouples the replica from the master, performs a recovery on that, turns it into essentially a fully functioning master, relabels it so that, and sets up a new service for it. Um, that was an interesting one to write, but it's very useful to do a, you know, a thick clone of a or copy of a database. Um, so it kind of combines backup and restore all in one piece. And the operator is able to do watches on all of that workflow and know uh, whether or not, you know, things have actually completed or whether they've, the replication is that you know finalized essentially uh, and whether it's actually back up and running so that's an interesting command that some people will find useful and those are really the main features of the operator again it's an open source project you definitely can take a look at it there's a few releases of it out there now um, we try to do a new release of it about once a month or every six weeks, essentially, to add new features uh, over time. And what it really is, it's a means of controlling like Postgres deployments. It gives a high level abstraction around that. And um, we think for people that are doing lots of Postgres deployments on Kubernetes or OpenShift, this is something they'd want to look at uh, for sure to help make their jobs uh, easier. Um, it integrates tightly with Kubernetes API, um, so it, it plays nicely with Kubernetes and will always be in line with where the Kubernetes API is, um, you know, and it does, you know, fairly sophisticated orchestrations like backup, restore, and cloning, and policy management. Uh, in the future, what you will see here are more advanced security and management features, no doubt, um, and more templates, advanced templates of what actually a Postgres cluster consists of. It will follow the path of the Kubernetes API too. So today it uses third-party resources. In the future, it will definitely support the custom resource definitions as TPRs become deprecated. There's some information if you need to reach out and contact me um, and where the project is. And Diane, do we have time to do like a quick demonstration? We, we certainly do, but I have one um, one little question because you keep talking about like the PGO clone being, you know, a technically difficult um, command to write. If someone wanted to um, create another command and add it to that, um, you know, what is what is the work behind that look like? Yeah, what you would do is um, basically get into this project. You would develop, you will see where all of the commands are divided out. Uh, and where the client actually like uh, has all of the commands in, in, in different yeah. Golang packages. And you would basically have to develop uh, your own, you know, command package. You would add it to the project and, you know, submit a PR for it. And behind those commands, though, 
is usually some code you would add into the controller. So you would add some code there too to implement a command. So they play hand in hand. Um, on the client side, you're typically interacting with those third party resources. So for some new functions, you have to add like a new um, third party resource. And then the controller has to have code in it to deal with those changes to those third party resources. So there's code you would have to add in both the client and on the operator's side, um, you know, in order to implement, say, a new command. Um, mm. Right now, that code is not pluggable. Uh, it's it's not something you would add, like, you know, like dynamically add code to it. You would have to right now add the code directly into the project, um, mm -hmm. you know, and that's how you would extend it today. Um, and the same for the templates as well. The templates you can add to, but uh, in some advanced cases, um, you, you're going to have to basically submit PRs to the project to get those templates that you want added in. Um, that's going to probably change over time as this gets more pluggable and we start taking more advantage of um, Golang's ability to add, you know, dynamic modules and things like that. I can see where people might have um, custom commands, at, you know, in larger scale things. I mean, you've put the clone in, you've done, you know, all the basic stuff there. And mm -hmm. I actually can't think of anything else off the top of my head that I might want to do. But I can assure you that there's probably DBAs that have specific things and maybe the templating bits help them out with that as well. But um, it, it's totally cool what you're doing. And it's the first time someone's explained operators as nicely as you have. And we do have plenty of time. Um, for a demo. So uh, there's a couple of folks okay. on and I don't see any questions from them. So why don't you go ahead um, with the demo and then we'll see again if there's any questions after that. Okay, hopefully um, everyone can see my screen here. So first of all, let's just create us a new Postgres cluster. So we can't, we can't see your screen yet. We're still seeing the question screen. There we go. Perfect. Very good. So I've entered a command here, PGO create cluster, and I'm going to call this one Red Hat. So by entering that command, I just uh, interacted with, created a third party resource on OpenShift, and the operator saw that third party resource get created, and it said, hey, I got a, I got a user that wants to create a Postgres cluster, we're going to name it Red Hat. And it does all kinds of things in that operator, like creating those services, the Postgres deployments, it spins up the containers, uh, handles persistent volumes uh, creation. If I do PGO show cluster Red Hat, <clears throat> you will basically see everything that it created. And it gives you things like that 9.6.3 is the version of the Postgres that it's actually running gives you the names of all of the related things like the deployments, the replica sets, the pods, gives you the status of that pod. So one slash one means that it's actually functioning, gives you the service endpoints. Um, you can now say PGO test Red Hat. And this will perform the uh, SQL ping and you'll see the first three say it's working and it prints out the equivalent psql command which a lot of P postgres people will find useful now it won't give you the password here there's another command i could show you that will basically display the password secrets but um, it will give you at least the psql command here the last three are not working because there is no replica basically uh, defined um, so it basically tries to ping it and, and there's nothing behind it essentially because I haven't scaled it up. Um, what I can do next is create a backup and say PGO backup Red Hat. So what that command just did was create a PG backup third party resource and then the operator detected that and it will cause it to create a Kubernetes job and that job uh, will run the crunchy backup container. It will connect to the Red Hat database. It will pull all or back up all of its data to a backup 
um, persistent volume claim that's allocated. And so all of that orchestration is done with that one command. You can say PGO show backup. That gives you the status of the backup. So it basically says it was submitted and gives you things like the backup um, persistent volume claim information. Um, you can look at a PVC, like PGO show PVC. Give it a name of a PVC. And if that's working, it will display basically um, what's on that PVC. And there's some flags you can pass to that to have it dig down lower, you know, lower levels as well. Like you could do um, that version of it, and it will actually peak a, a lower level. So it gives you a timestamp there of a database backup <clears throat> that it just performed. So now what I can do is restore a database from that. It gets a little wordy. Yeah, if you can click on the the word hide on your blue jeans meeting sharing pop-up it's covering up your um sorry about that item. that's okay there you go. Perfect. so what i'm what this command does is a wordy command but basically it's going to create a brand new postgres cluster called restored and it's going to, when I pass it a backup PVC flag and a backup path flag, it says it's a clue to this command and the container that you want to basically restore from a previous backup. So that's why you're giving it those paths. And then when you say secret from, it's going to use the credentials from uh, the Red Hat database. So it'll copy those credentials so that it'll have its own unique set of credentials. So if I run that command, it basically is off. The operator now is off doing all of that orchestration for you. Um, if you say PGO show cluster all, now you'll see you have a, quite a few clusters. <clears throat> Test was one I created before this demo, but there's the restored um, cluster. And you'll see that it's still kind of working. It says zero slash one. So if I say PGO, um, show cluster stored. It'll just show you that one. And now it's up and running. I can say PGO test stored. And basically I'm able to connect to it and ping to it. Um, what I can also do is show you a little bit about policies. So a policy, it can be just a any bit of SQL that you would um, send, you know, whatever you, whatever defines a, a SQL policy for you. And it, it could just be anything you, you want from creating objects or adding security uh, settings or whatever. This SQL uh, would, will eventually get applied and run on that Postgres database as the Postgres user. So if you need to switch to different users, you would do that inside your SQL. But I have some policies defined here, and you PGO create policy. Oh, I have to give it a policy name. Sorry. So that just created a policy. And that's what the policy looks like. So that's actually a third party resource as well. And now I could apply those policies uh, by just saying PGO apply uh, against database. So that would look like this. And the quick question, um, um, Brad's asking uh, back on the backup stuff, if 
does the, the backup um, persistent volume type need to support read write many? Um, it depends. Uh, this will work either with a shared volume type like uh, host path or, or NFS, but it also will work uh, in, a, in a, a different configuration where uh, the PVCs are created individually. But yes, you would need it to at least have read write um, for, you know, you're basically creating the backups. I hope that answers your question. But it is interesting in that um, we're trying to make this work for all the different volume types, whether they be shared ones or things like GC or AWS volume types where you, you basically can't share those. So you'll see in the documentation where uh, through some configuration, you can you can tweak those those settings. You can also change the templates behind the PVC uh, if you need to add your own um, attributes to actually what gets created. So like you, if you wanted to add a storage class or something of that effect, you could add that in those, the templates that the operator is, is using. So it's a template driven um, thing the operator is. It's reading templates for services, for deployments, and for persistent volume claims as well. So you can get in there and do some fiddling with it and tweak it and add some attributes as well. Uh, and you can set up defaults in the PGO configuration file that will specify things like the size of the PVCs and I think also the read, write, or access. Uh, you can specify that there as well and override whatever default uh, that it's set to. Um, I can apply a policy like this. I think. So this command, I'm sorry. So let me explain this command. PGO apply policy one is going to basically take that policy one command there, which is a create table command in, in Postgres, and it's going to apply it against anything that matches that selector. In this case, I'm going to say name equals red hat. And I've got something wrong there, I think. Yeah, it already existed. It's already ran that. So it's giving me an error back saying you've already run it essentially. Um, but if I did it on restored, it give you um, output like that. And what happened is it basically just, the operator runs that SQL against, you know, whatever clusters match up with that selector. So that's kind of a, a neat feature as well. If I want to scale up one, of these clusters, I can say PGOs, I could type today, PGO scale, red hat. So that scales up the replica deployment um, to one or it sets it to one. So now if I do PGO show uh, cluster red hat, now you've got two pods out there and it says red hat replica that this one here is basically the one that just spun up. So there's two deployments. One is for the master and one is for the replica. The master is always set at one because Postgres is a single master database. The replica deployment um, is initially set to zero. You can set that via configuration to whatever you want, but it's just basically setting, if you set it to zero, it's basically just setting out there waiting for you to scale it up if you need to. Now, for development, most people are not gonna need to scale up a Postgres cluster. So that's why a, a reasonable default for some people will be just zero, but it's setting out there in case you do need to scale it up. So if you take this and run, say, a production system with it, you very likely will need to scale up or want to scale up those read-only replicas. Um, but that's an example of how to scale up essentially. And lastly, probably the most complicated thing is this clone command. If I say PGO clone red hat, something like name my clone to, um, what this command is going to do is create a new Postgres cluster called my clone to and base it off of the red hat cluster. And it's going to do what I'm calling a thick clone, meaning that it's going to 
create a brand new replica, attach it to Red Hat, allow the replication to finish. Um, and once the replication is finished and that replica is ready to go, I'm going to detach it. So I'm basically doing a backup, um, but I'm using a replica, a, a live replica to perform that backup. I'm going to detach it, trigger a recovery on it, create a brand new service for it, <clears throat> for the My Clone 2 database. And basically, you've just done a thick clone. Now, the operator can watch these things for a very long time. So if these backups or restores take, you know, hours, it's okay because it's just sitting there reading the cube API, watching events, and it's registered to look at all of these Postgres objects, and it will only continue the workflow if it knows that, hey, the backup is finished, so therefore I'll go ahead and trigger a recovery on it. So that's the beauty of using those cube APIs, and it's it's able to do these very long watches and watch for events so that a workflow may take you know hours or days, and it doesn't really matter to the operator. It's just sitting there waiting for things to happen. So if I do PGO show cluster my clone two, we should have a well. I think I got something off there. You know, I guess it's just taking a while for the clone to happen, or I've had a problem with it, but. That essentially would have normally spun up a, a, a secondary clone. I must have typed something wrong or caused it to error off. But that's all of the um, the demo that I have today. And I guess, Diane, with that, I'm kind of, um, you know, the, kind of I on think, a point to, to wrap it up. I think that that was great. And um, doing a live demo, if you don't have something go sideways a little bit, um, it's not not a live demo. Um, exactly. So, <laughs> perfect. I think you've answered the questions um, that the folks had in chat. Uh, I am uh, totally impressed with the level of automation that's in there now and um, that's capable of. And it's a great example, I think, uh, with just using Postgres for one, but I think that's a great way to learn about operators and Kubernetes as well. So thank you um, for taking the time today to do this. And, um, along with containerizing Postgres, you guys at Crunchy, Crunchy Data have done some amazing stuff to make Postgres um, super awesome on OpenShift, and we really appreciate it. So thank you very much for all your work. Um, there's, let me just double check in chat that that was the last question. Yeah. Um, yes, we're all kind of excited to see all the Postgres stuff work, and I keep seeing Postgres everywhere. So. Um, Good stuff. Thank you very much, Jeff. Cheers. Thank you.